let's start with Yahoo Finance. So previously you were able to go to the website, open some stock, and today we'll be working with uh, Apple stock. I'm a fan, what can I say? Go to historical data, and here you had link to download uh, historical data in CSV format. You could easily put it into Power BI and work with that however you please. However, as of recently, Yahoo Finance removed that option. But there is a workaround. If you go back to summary, if you start inspecting the page and you go to Network tab, and let's refresh it just so that we can see all of the requests that page is making. You can actually intercept one API call, the internal API call, which this chart on the left makes. If you look at it, there is some structure, right? If you put, if you copy paste it and put it into Postman, and you know I am a fan of Postman. <clears throat> and click send, you will actually get response from that APIs. There's no authentication, nothing. And you get all of the data that chart on the page receives. So there is symbol, exchange name, some basic information about the stock, uh, some movements within the day. And if you scroll down, Let's scroll down. A lot of scrolling. You can actually get daily uh, historical data for open, close, high, low, etc. I will spare you the details. You can look into the JSON structure to understand it. And let's switch to Power BI and try to extract the data in Power BI and work with it. So if I switch here, this is the end result. Uh, what I will be extracting here is the date column, open price, high price, low price, close price, volume, and adjusted close price. Although this is optional. Actually, let me switch to advanced editor and let's go through the code. That will be easier. I hope you watch my video about relative paths when you work with uh, API calls. This function allows you to refresh APIs within Power BI service. So use it and watch that video. Let's have a look back at the URL. Here we have query one, although query two works as well. I guess they have few service that, uh, servers that serve that API. So query to finance yahoo.com. This is our uh, base URL. Then in relative pass, we have a few things we need to specify. Version eight finance chart and our stock ticker, right? If we take a look here, this is exactly what we have here. Version eight finance chart, Apple, AAPL, okay. And there are two parameters that we can pass. If you look here, you can actually see options that you can pass. Here, valid ranges. So there's data granularity and there are valid ranges. One day, five days, one month, etc. maximum. I don't want to do maximum right now. I'll shorten it, however, it's up to you. So interval, I'll specify as one day. I want daily data on a daily level. And range, I want data for one year. Okay, so those are two parameters that they specify. After that, what you have to do, have to do is you have to extract all of the necessary uh, fields, columns, whatever from JSON, stru uh, JSON structure from the response that you're getting from the server. This is where the magic happens. So the important thing is uh, I would like to store results in a separate uh, variable. 
Cool three results. Okay. And from the source, I'm extracting array called chart. Within that array, I'm extracting array called result. And I'm only extracting first and the countdown starts from zero. So I'm only extracting first result. There will be a lot more, but I need only the first one. Meta, okay, I'm extracting some metadata that API response provides, and I will be switching between uh, Postman and uh, Power BI just to show you what's inside Meta. This is what we have inside Meta. So I'm extracting this array as well into separate variable that I will be working with. And then I'm extracting separate uh, values or parameters, however you call it, from that uh, meta array. Currency, symbol, exchange name, instrument name, first trade data, time zone, etc. Although most of it I will not be using specifically in this example, it, it will still be useful in other uh, queries that I have. What do we need here? We need timestamp. This is our date. Uh, so results, timestamp. Uh, this one is important, quotes. So we're extracting results, indicators, quote, and again, just the first result. And from quotes, from that array, we're extracting our volume. You can see quotes volume, I'm referring to that nested uh, column, uh, close prices, so close, high, low, open, and adjusted close is stored separately. It's stored in indicators, adjusted close, first, adjusted close. So you really have to dive into the structure of uh, JSON response if you want to extract proper data. Once you've done that, uh, since I don't need all of the parameters here, I'm only selecting those that I want to see here. So I'm uh, converting into table, selecting the columns, and here I'm specifying which columns do I need. It's timestamp, close price, volume, high price, low price, open price, adjusted close. So you can see here, in curly brackets, I'm specifying columns that I'm extracting from the JSON response. And the names that I want to specify for them. Once you do that, though, and let me switch to the data so you see, for timestamp, you will get uh, numbers like this. Those are Unix timestamps which have to be converted into daytime, regular daytime format. So to do that, you will have to add custom column. Let me switch here. And this is how you transform Unix timestamp. You have to do addition. Once you do, you will get proper date here. Then you have to specify data types. Most of it is just uh, decimal numbers, and here you have the date. And since you no longer need a uh, timestamp, you can remove it. What I like to do, because I also like reordering columns, as well as removing columns that I don't need, I usually use select columns. Instead of having two steps in my Power Query, first uh, deleting the columns and then reordering columns, I use just one. This is select columns. In this case, you can only specify columns that you need, but also uh, it follows the order that you specified here. So you can just save one step. So here I'm selecting date, open price, high, low, etc. Everything except for time step, which I no longer need. And once you finish that, you have historical data for stock quote prices. What you can do after that, and I've done that here already, you can convert that into function. And by doing so, you can make list of uh, stock tickers 
attach function to that and make table with multiple uh, stock historical data. So let's see how does that work. What you will need to add first is name of your function as well as which, what you will be passing as an input to this function. In our case, this is a ticker AAPL or MSVT, Microsoft, uh, as text, etc. Then the rest is more or less the same, but you are changing and adding ticker here to a relative pass. This is the, the change. And then at the end, you have to make sure that you are also closing properly with your function reference, which you started with and you are closing with. In body and soul, you will transform it into function and then you can pass some ticker here and query uh, the data. What you can also do is to make the table uh, and here, let's see, ticker. Let me delete this one. AAPL, MSVT. Okay, we can add a custom column, invoke custom function. I will not be changing the name. You can specify that function that we just created. You can specify that uh, the column that will be used as an input is your ticker column, where you specify tickers that you want uh, to get historical data for. And once you do, uh, Power BI executes the function, queries the data and creates tables for you. And after that, you can expand those tables and you will have historical data for your stocks. That's how easy it is. And that's all for today. Subscribe and see you in the next one.